So, if you're seeing more of these issues while you're trying to get into ChatGPT, all excited, trying to come up with new ideas, new solutions perhaps, you're not alone. The reason we are seeing more and more of those capacity issues is because folks are using ChatGPT all over the world and it's been exponential. The growth has been exponential to say the least. That's bogging down the servers and creating some capacity issues. So what do you do? Well, it just turns out that there is a much better solution out there, also by OpenAI, but it's called the GPT-3 which can do everything that you can do with ChatGPT, perhaps much more efficiently. So why don't we just dive deeper into GPT-3? All right, so the way to get into GPT-3, if you were to do a quick Google search with GPT-3, the first option that shows up for us is OpenAI site, OpenAI API. So we just click on that. And that brings us to OpenAI, the website. So at this point, you either sign up, if you're not signed up already, or if you already sign up, you just have to log in, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to log in with my Google account. Now, this is how it looks when you first come in. And you'll notice right on top, there's an option called the playground. If you click on that, this is your GPT-3. And this is how it looks. And as you can see that it looks a little different from ChatGPT. Of course, we have a few options here on the right-hand side, which allows us to tweak parameters. And depending on what we select, it will show us a different set of results, which is great. So it gives you a bit more flexibility. Now, I'm not saying you have to know all the parameters here. I'll show you one or two that you need to be aware of. But beyond that, unless you want to be heavily technical, you can just leave them at the default values. So the other thing you'll notice that even the layout it looks slightly less intuitive, more abstract perhaps compared to ChatGPT because ChatGPT is meant to be more of a interactive chatbot where human-like interactions are meant to happen. So obviously the look and feel is a little different. But beyond that, in terms of the capabilities as we are going to find out in a minute, GPT-3 is actually much better than ChatGPT. So, that being said, why don't we just ask GPT-3, what are some of the differences between the two? I'm asking, what are the differences between GPT-3 and ChatGPT? So let's see what sort of answer it comes back with. So it gives you a detailed explanation as to what the differences are. So it says ChatGPT is a dialogue model built on GPT-3, and that's designed for interactive discussions, engaging conversation, just as I've mentioned before. ChatGPT is trained on conversational data and is able to generate replies to user inquiries in a conversational tone. GPT-3 is used primarily for general language understanding, so on and so forth. So why don't we just ask GPT-3, what are some of the benefits of using GPT-3 as compared to chat GPT. Let's see what it comes back with. So the main benefit is saying is its ability to generate more complex language than chat GPT. This can be useful for tasks such as text summarization, question answering, and so forth. So already it's saying that it's way more in terms of the capabilities, it's much more powerful than chat GPT. And from my research, what I found out, I believe GPT-3 has 175 billion parameters versus GPT-3 has 20 million parameters. So as you can already see, that it's just a subset of GPT-3. So that's where the differences are coming from, and it's way more powerful. Okay, so let's just see what we can do with it. So it is technically free. I've used it a few times and I never had any issues using it, but I am aware that if you go over a certain capacity of usage or if you're if you're using as an entity or a large organization, obviously after a certain threshold, there is a chance that you are going to be charged. But that more or less applies for large organizations. So I wouldn't worry as an individual using it. It's essentially free for now in this beta form. So that being said, 
let's just use it. Let's see what are the basics. And as we are covering that, I can show you some of these other options here that may be beneficial to you. So let's do that. So let me ask the same question I asked a while back of ChatGPT. So I'm going to ask, right, the different dinosaur eras and then submit. Let's see what it comes back with. Okay, as you can already see that it's much faster than ChatGPT, at least from my experience. Now that's all good. Now, if I were to rephrase that question and say that, let's just copy that same question here and add to that. So I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to say in details. Not in the summary format, but in details and see what happens. So it's going to go through the same question and try and come back with some details here. But you notice at a certain point it stops and it's not complete, correct? And this is where the parameter that I want you to be aware of and perhaps the most important one of all the things that you see here is the max length. So if I were to highlight that, it says right there that the maximum number of tokens to generate. Requests can use up to 4,000 tokens shared between the question and the completion or the description. The exact limits varies by model and mind you that we are using the default model of text DaVinci 003. I wouldn't even touch it. That's the best model they have right now. And what it says also, one token is roughly four characters for normal English text. Now I do have another link and I'm going to have that link in the description along with the playground. I'm going to have both the links, but that being said, you can essentially copy what we just asked and the results of it and come back to that link. It's a tokenizer link by OpenAI as well. So if I click on that, it tells me exactly how many tokens are there, which by the way should show up here too. So it says 504 tokens and it also says how many characters are there. So the reason you're seeing 504, that's because it's including everything that's there. I just, in my case, I wanted to see how many tokens are there here. So, and we've noticed that we have 266 tokens, which is higher than the max that's been defined, which is your default of 256. So I'd suggest even before you start posing your first question, maybe raise it to a higher number, the length, so that you don't necessarily have to face that. I'm not suggesting that you have to go all the way to 4,000. I'm just going to say that leave it around 2,000. So the response that you get back is detailed enough without any issues. So why don't we do this? We can ask to regenerate and that button is there as well and see what it comes back with. See now it picked up the same, the last question that we have and hopefully we get a complete response back. All right, looks like it's just fine. Now we can do the same things that we have done before. We can say, describe the same so that a five year old can understand perhaps in three Paragraphs. And then submit. See what we get. So it's summarizing it in a way so that a five year old can understand here as well. It's a simpler explanation of the different dinosaur errors so that a five year old can understand. So you can see that it can essentially do the same thing that ChatGPT is doing for us except for it's much faster and you don't need to worry about not being able to access it. So that's one option. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you, if you were to look at the insert option here, which is the second option on the right hand side, what it does, it allows you to insert. And if I can highlight that, it allows you to insert perhaps an incomplete sentence and let GPT-3 complete that for us. For example, 
right after it described all the different errors, I can go somewhere in the middle and say, the movie Jurassic Park was, and then I can just say insert anything that you can think of and submit and look what happens. It completes that. And if you were to scroll down here, and this is the section that it completed, the movie Jurassic Park was set during the Cretaceous period. So you see how powerful it is, right? Right in here. That's good so far. And the other option, the final option that maybe is handy for you is being able to edit. So for example, you can essentially do anything with the result that, that we have gotten, right? So we can say, for example, let's say I add, I add, or I, I accidentally make an error with my question here. For example, if I can go and I say describe, I misspell describe, and I'll just say fix the grammar, just as they had as a default, and submit, look what happens there. Submit, and before we know, it should be fixed. And if I come back here, you'll notice that the same question that I had with the spelling error is already been fixed. So that's one of the thing, one of the neat option that you have. And again, you know, as, as a non-tech person, when you're coming in and you're worried about all these other options there, I just leave them to the default. I wouldn't even worry about them. So what are the things that you can use for? And I'm not going to go through all of them here, but I can say that you can use GPT-3 for everything that you can use ChatGPT for. For example, helping you out with a blog post outline and detailed description, you can generate that. You can create from start to finish all of the details that you need for creating a YouTube video. So you can ask for ideas, you can ask for titles, descriptions, thumbnails, script, essentially everything that you need so that you can follow that. You can ask for multiple options here, so you pick the best options. You can do that. Now, of course, if you're a tech person or if you're a programmer, you can provide GPT-3 with a programming issue and ask it to fix it or offer some alternates, and it will come back with that. Yeah, so not to forget, and this is where I focus more, with my background that I want to get neat prompts to craft neat prompts using GPT-3 just as I would with ChatGPT that I can bring back into some of the advanced AI art generation tools and use the combine the power of the two to create mind-blowing art, AI art. So that's another option and I'm hoping that I'll cover that in one of the later videos, upcoming videos. So yeah, those are all the things that you can do. I hope you found this video beneficial. I wanted to show you some of the layouts and what you can do to maximize the output from GPT-3. And I wanted to show you some of the differences. I hope you found it beneficial as well. And feel free to use the comment section below to share your experience with GPT-3 and how you find it as compared to ChatGPT and what you think are some of the strengths or benefits from GPT-3 that you're finding more so than ChatGPT. Thank you.